I was running and I ran with my arm out all the way down this footpath. Yeah. Because they don't, yeah. they come right near you otherwise. People, so I ran like people I thought she was that, turning right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Friday morning. It's Heart Breakfast with Jamie Theakston and Amanda Holden. I don't know if you've noticed, man, but TV's terrible at the moment, isn't it? I mean, like toe curlingly bad. Yes. Anything that's either live or has been made in the past month or so, oh. unwatchable. <laughs> Thankfully, on Netflix tonight, series two of Afterlife arrives and the writer and creator of that show joins us live via facetime morning ricky gervais good morning hello <laughs> can we discuss your backdrop it looks marvelously um abundant well, shall we say are you doing this from you your trophy backdrop, that makes it look like i've hired <laughs> someone the house for cribs on mtv well you have got a shelf of awards most people don't know this that. is real though I haven't done this for you like your mum used to tidy up when your mate came round. Yeah. This is this is my actual house. I haven't done anything special. <laughs> it's like you're live in your trophy cabinet. Yeah. It is, it is yeah. That's, it's um, like the PE I mean, trophy cabinet, yeah. My my study, as I call it, there's, there's no studying in it. Um, <laughs> it's the smallest room in the house, so I thought it'd be less echoey. So I do my little broadcast from here because it's a, it's a little, I've got a tiny little room as, that's my, my office. How oh, are you fantastic. finding lockdown yeah, how are you generally, doing? Ricky? Um, do you know what? As I've said before, you won't hear me complain. Mm. Um, the people in terrible positions, there's nurses doing 14-hour shifts and, you know, frontline workers and people still out there, you know, cleaning the roads and stuff. So... I'm a writer, so I can still do that. My 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 tour's been postponed, but you know what? We'll do it another time when everyone can enjoy it. So, um, you know, I don't go out anyway, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, you know, I do. Uh, and I, I, I've always got enough booze for a nuclear winter. So <laughs> exactly. That exactly. I'm Same watching. I, I'm on the couch by six o'clock with a bottle of wine. That hasn't changed. <laughs> Um, so I'm I'm doing fine. We mentioned Brilliant. Uh, our season two of Afterlife. I mean, I say it's on tonight, but it's already started streaming started this on morning Netflix. at eight a.m. It did. So they could have already watched two episodes, but they were listening to you <laughs> playing great tunes. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, how do you think the show's <laughs> themes might resonate more during this time, Ricky? Well, I think the biggest thing is what. Uh, Jamie touched on the fact that people are tired of TV shows being made on Zoom. <laughs> so anything that's high budget with real cameras and brilliant cast and <laughs> it's it, it, it's it a bit of money spent on it, yeah. <laughs> so uh, and you know, yeah, I, I think um, I think people are thinking about the more important things in life now. I've noticed just personally, uh, you know, you, you're phoning family more mm. than you ever did, yeah, and. Um, you, you do realise that it's the little things that matter in life and people want to get back to all those normal things that you took for granted. Exactly. Um, so I, I think they will they will think about things. And obviously these are the bigger issues in this show. But I should say it is still a comedy. I mean, it's, you know, it is about um, grief and, and, and mental illness to a certain extent and love and loss and all those big things. But... It's still lots of jokes. It's still funny. He's still got a funny job. He still meets funny characters. Mm. I don't want people to think this is like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so, um, it, you know, it, it is still funny. But, yes, it is, about, it is about a man who loses the love of his life. And the big question is, if you lose everything, is life still worth living? He's trying to get better. So that, that's the that's the idea, but it's it is a comedy. I fr I watched I've watched the the first episode, and a friend of mine when I when I said I'd watch it, they said, "Oh, has Tony moved on?" But it isn't about healing, is it? No, it's really? about trying to live with what you're dealing with, isn't it? Exactly. Well, the one thing he wants, he can't have. He knows he can't have his wife back. And yeah, the, the sort of play on words with the afterlife is that he's an atheist, so he doesn't think she's in heaven, but. She lives on. She lives on uh, on video. The videos she made, all the good times. And when we were doing those flashbacks that he watches, we realised that the happier they were, the sadder it is now. Because people realised that he just lost the perfect relationship. He didn't want anything else. He didn't need anything else. And um, so that that's particularly um, poignant, I think. Mm. Uh, but yeah, he um, he's decided. He's going through the seven stages of grief. He's been through 
shock, anger, denial. And now he's at the negotiating phase. He's basically saying, okay, come on world. Why should I stick around? What have you got for me? And um, he tried everything in the first series. He mm. tried anger, violence, drugs, all those things. Um, and now he's trying kindness. Now he's trying to get on with people who sort of, who, who helped him. And um, that's not working out great either. <laughs> <laughs> How do, you, how do you think Tony? How do you think Tony would have uh, adjusted to life during the uh, coronavirus? I think he'd have loved it. I put a door. No one come near my door. Yeah. I think he'd have, he'd have except the dog. He'd have walked the dog. He'd have been just as grumpy. Um, I mean, I'm grumpy when I'm out doing the one hours. People were not walking on the right side. People were coming to oh. joggers trying to go between us. Yes, uh, people that walk a, three abreast. Yeah. I thought he was eccentric at first, and now I want to do what he's doing. He walks along with a six-foot stick like that, <laughs> and it's a brilliant idea. Do you know? I want to do that. Do you know what I did the other day? I was running, and I ran with my arm out all the way down this footpath because yeah. they don't. Yeah. They come right near you otherwise. So people, I ran like people I thought she was that, turning right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate. I hate them. And people that are in lockdown with each other all but they walk three abreast across a path and you're like, just That's moving. really annoying as well. Oh. Yeah, exactly. They, t- uh, they, they take up the whole the path. path. So you have to go into the bushes or yeah. I've walked in the road about 50 times Me this too. Week. I've run a marathon in one hour just doing that, weaving. But I, I honestly, I turn into a headmaster. Me? I, 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 also, I'm not brave enough to go, excuse me, can you? so I just tut and shake my head and hope they know what I'm saying. <laughs> I've turned. I was going to ask you about uh, Brandy the dog. Is it true that when you had to say goodbye to your cast when you'd finished filming, that you you felt more tearful about leaving the dog than anyone else? Well, of course, because I was hugging everyone when people used to hug people, and <laughs> um, and then I got to the dog and I thought, oh no, she doesn't know why she's not going to see me next week. And I mean, I'm, I'm I was putting way too much, <laughs> giving it way too much credit of on empathy, our intelligence. <laughs> Uh, but um, yeah, um, I uh, yeah, I, you do get attached to them. They're they're they're. I mean, some of them are better people than people. So I I love dogs. I think they're the greatest. They're the reason. They're one of the big reasons to live. I think mm. dogs. I think I think they're amazing. I think they'd be in my top five. Well, you know what? Why top five stay friends. alive? You know, yeah. friends, family. You know, um, partner. I think dogs. Then dogs and wine. <laughs> yeah, definitely in my top three that is one of your great <laughs> skills one of your great skills Ricky is to find uh, a sort of comedic vein in, in tricky situations do you think there'll be a coronavirus sitcom or a or something that from you know from the time well the- I'm sad to say I think there'll be about 30 mm. there must be there's probably 19 novels being written now <laughs> there's, there's loads of TV shows there's probably one that's set in on a reality show it's gonna be a glut and I, and I think do you know that I think people want to get back to normal um did you know that in the war they shot a lot of the war the second world war in color right people didn't know that but after the war they decolorized it to make it look like a bygone era so I think people want to when this is over they want to forget it. they want to see it in black and white and that's it exactly yeah <laughs> This is hard.